Hi everyone. Okay, so I'm working on my first sketch that's like an urban sketch style. Um, I sketched out the my childhood home that I grew up in and I don't feel confident enough to do this in, in pen ahead of time. So I did it in pencil and then I used my kneaded eraser to lighten up a lot of the areas. So here I'm using my Zig liner. It's the 05. I've had this one for a long time, um, but I think it's finally drying out on me. So I ended up having to do some double lines here and there with it. But this is a waterproof ink. So I was able to outline all of this. Um, I guess it's called Zig Millennium is the pen. And um, this childhood home, was built in the 1970s. So I thought I would start building a sketchbook based upon things that I just remember from my life. You know, when we look back and we remember homes that we've lived in in the past. Um, for example, I remember what the old telephones looked like, what color they were, some of the old appliances. I thought it would be fun to sketch and draw out those kinds of things, kind of like, a sketchbook of my life. So um, one of my daughters in particular really enjoys art and I think she would appreciate having this kind of journal from me. So um, this is kind of, you know, geared with telling a story to my kids as well. Um, so it's starting out with this picture of my childhood home where I grew up from the time I was about three years old until I was 17. Uh, we lived in the Houston area and this particular neighborhood is called Kenswick and I accidentally cut it off but that there's a big brick wall above the house that's actually a brick wall of the entrance of the neighborhood. Um, I didn't realize my camera totally had it cut out of the shot so um, I will show it completed but if you're wondering in the completion photos later the big wall is a um, is the neighborhood entrance and that wall that little brick entrance is still standing to this day so every now and then when we go back to visit family and we drive by the area my kids have seen that and they've seen this old house so I thought what I would do is sketch it out here and then that upper left corner I'll have plenty of space there to um, write out the story of you know what years in particular I lived there and maybe just some fun memories that I have from that particular house so um, like I was saying this is my first urban sketch style so I don't know that my perspective is a hundred percent some of it I'm needing to go from memory um, because the way the house looks now uh, it looks like the people added a fireplace and then some of the trees and bushes that were there when I was a kid, um, they aren't there anymore. It's pretty much just a green lawn and that's it. They have no bushes, no trees in the front at all. But my mom had this big pink mimosa tree in the front yard. So that's what I'm trying to put right there in front of the windows of the house is just this mimosa tree that we had. It was usually green. It was only pink for like a month out of the year, <laughs> but um, that's what I'm trying to include there. And I don't really have a good pink in this particular set. Um, the watercolor set that I'm using is the Winsor & Newton Pocket, I believe it's called the Field Pocket Travel Set. So it's um, more stocked with the colors for strictly urban sketching and not so much the botanicals. So I don't have like a bright magenta or anything like that to make a really bright pink. Closest thing I have is like an alizarin crimson, um, but that's still a lot deeper of a red. So this kit does have a sap green, so I love having that convenience color in here. So I'm just starting by painting all these bushes um, with the sap green. I think I've decided that the sun is going to be coming from the right hand side but some of my shading may be off too. I was just really trying to figure things out as I went since this is the first time I've done this. So 
hopefully some of y'all can learn from my mistakes and uh, things that are going well. The sketchbook that I'm using is by Arteza. It's one of their larger sketchbooks. I'll have to see if I actually took a picture of it. I don't remember. I think it's an 11 by 14 sketchbook. So it's one of the large, it's one of the largest sketchbooks I have. And I really love it for this type of, um, of drawing because I feel like I have plenty of room to do the drawing, but I also have plenty of room to write the story and things like that behind it. So again, sorry that part is totally cut off. So I'm going to try to jump ahead to areas that you can actually watch me painting. So now I'm trying to go in with my second layer. So this one I have mixed in one of the darker yellows with the sap green to kind of add some shading to these bushes and also some sunlight, um, maybe just some yellow sun coming in on these sides. Here I'm going to mix uh, ultramarine and I believe this is burnt sienna to get this nice gray. I'm trying to make it a very, very light gray as possible to color in the driveway as well as the sidewalks. It's interesting, this uh, driveway was a, I guess they called it a swing, a J swing driveway. I can't tell you how many times um, Either my mom or other people had, you know, always crossed on the grass right there on that curve. That was like my dad's pet peeve. <laughs> Everyone running over his grass. We had a nice thick turf of a grass there. Um, in Houston, you get that nice thick, cold on your feet, uh, St. Augustine grass. Um, really nice, lush, soft grass. Not like this prickly grass we have in the Dallas area. Um, but that's how I got the gray. Now I am going to still go ahead and try out the Lamp Black. This is Winsor & Newton Lamp Black in the Cotman series. Um, the roof is a composition roof, so I just wanted to go down with a basic uh, color of it and then later on try to go in with the shading. Now this one kind of has, you know, when the light shines on it, it gets some little white specks. Um, just reflecting sunlight so I left a few white spots in it and then um, I'll go back in and try to layer to darken some areas to really make it look like a composition roof and not just a flat roof. The brick wall ended up being more orange than I had planned. I did use the I guess in this set it's probably the cadmium orange hue and I probably should have muted it down just a little bit more with some burnt umber to make it closer to the actual brick color, but I figured, well, additional bold color is okay. So here is, I took the sap green and I believe I mixed it with the, um, what is that one called? Burnt umber. So I took the sap green and burnt umber and got a little bit of a darker area here for the grass. And um, so we had this grass area between us and the neighbor. And then the garden area there was usually mulched, but I didn't want to put a ton of brown right there next to the house because the house was already like a reddish brown color. So I thought in this particular image, it would just blend too strangely. So I'm just going to cover all these grass areas as much as I can with that mixture of the um, sap green and the burnt umber kind of gets this darker green color that stands out a little bit more from all of those bushes. The brush I'm using is a Princeton Neptune size 10. I'm really surprised how much I can paint just using this one brush. It is a, a large brush, but it has such a clean, fine uh, tip point on the end that I can really do a lot with this one brush. So I know this looks scary. This was one of those moments where I was like, okay, should I have stopped where I was? And because now my house looks like it has freckles, but it worked out. That's the nice thing with watercolor. 
um, I was able to go back in and I really felt like it really looks like a composition roof now. So um, just watered down those spots a little bit, blended them in a little bit more, and it really does give it that look. So that is the uh, Burnt Umber and Elysian Crimson mixed together. And that's what I'm trying to come up with as far as for the house color. So this neighborhood was named Kenswick. Um, so that's an English name and these houses, the idea is that they're stylized after, uh, cottages in England. So my mom thought it would be great to paint the house like this reddish brown. Um, I don't know, personally as a kid, you know, you never appreciate things your parents are doing and I just thought it ended up looking like a barn, but <laughs> Um, she wanted that color. So we all got out there and painted the house that color and, and it looked good. I mean, I think it looked better than what it looks like now. The people have painted it. I think it's practically white. They painted the brick too, which I thought was really weird. I do not like it when people paint the brick, but everyone has their own ideas of what they want to do and, you know, trends come and go. So, um, they painted the brick, um, since then but when we lived there it was like an orangey brick and that's where the front door is located that first little black spot I made on the left um, you can't hardly see it from the street there's this odd little notch there's a little sidewalk that goes through there and then this sharp left turn and that's where there was this big window which actually was the hallway that led to my room and then there was a the front door is in there and then there were those three windows. So I wanted to paint those early on. And um, now the neighbors have like a black screen and my parents did too. They used like a, it wasn't a screen, it was that film stuff because the sun would come in so hot. So they, they darkened it with a black film. So that is how it looked like when I was growing up and I didn't want the black paint to bleed when I was trying to do the brickwork on this house. So I'm letting it sit and dry while I work on some other areas. Now this brush I ended up using for the most of the rest of this painting. And it is the R20. This brush is from Rosemary & Co. It's the R20. I believe it's called the Short Flat. I was able to do so much with this one brush because it puts down everything um, just very lightly. I could get exactly the control that I was looking for, especially with these straight edges. It didn't really take much effort to make sure that my lines were nice and clean going through those areas. So I really like this brush. It, um, it makes it really easy to get in those areas. So now, that my greens have dried, I'm going back in to put some of the darker shadowing in into some of these bushes. Um, again, those bushes at the top are around the entrance sign of the neighborhood. And here, I believe I'm using some of this um, nickel azo yellow. That's actually from Daniel Smith. I was able to fit two Daniel Smith colors into this palette. If you'd like to see the colors that are in this palette, I did do a swatching video right before this video. So I'll post that link here in the card right here so that you can see those. I've also made swatch cards that uh, you can download as a freebie off of my coffee page. So I'll link my coffee page below if you decide that you want to do swatch cards similar to how my swatch book is set up. I'm still working on my swatch book, so it'll probably still be about another month or two before my final swatch book video is posted. But meanwhile, I will be posting um, swatching videos of all the watercolor palettes that I do currently own. So there's a lot of them that I haven't used. I've had them in my stash, but um, I've, oh, I've been wanting to swatch them out and just hadn't had the time. So now this will give me the time. So what I've decided to do with this Rosemary & Co brush here now is to add some hatching to make it look like bricks, but I didn't feel like drawing out every single brick in this wall. 
So first I went in and drew out, you know, something that kind of looks like bricks, but then I just went in and blended them kind of like how I did the composition roof so that it can uh, soften the tones on those brick edges. And the same brush is just great to get in these little bitty areas. These are those wood panels in between each of those three windows and uh, just trying to paint the wood on those and separate those out from the brick of the house itself. I think this is where I realized this little section right here was actually brick, it's not wood. So I'm trying to go back in and match the brick color a little bit. Um, nice thing with these brushes and watercolors too is you can easily lift or add. Um, they they really pick up color very well. And that black did not bleed at all. So it's really good to let those layers dry a little bit. Now I'm not quite sure what I did with the driveway there. I was trying to show the difference in the concrete color. Like I said, sorry, I'm a beginner. So this is part of my learning curve. Um, I probably could have blended that a little bit better. Here's what my pan looks like. Those are the three little mixing spaces I used. And I used the little water container as well. Um, this is what that Rosemary & Co. brush looks like. This is a great little travel brush. It's such a convenient size. Um, I have a much smaller studio space now, so I really appreciate the size of this brush. And then there's that Princeton Neptune that I used as well. So I'll make sure to link all of these supplies below. You will notice that it does kind of stain the palette a little bit. Um, and this is the finished shot with the big immense Kenswick wall and the house itself. Well, I hope you enjoyed following along with my first little urban sketch. Thank you so much for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have sketches too, I'd love to see them. Link them below and see you next time.